this computer. Okay, we're recording now. So, welcome to this amazing, amazing lady right here. I'm so excited to chat with you. Um, for those of you guys watching, I want to just give a quick little intro over here. I think that's the way it looks. I don't know if I'm pointing in the wrong direction when you're watching it, but that's the way it looks for me. Um, so this is the lovely Nicole Munson. She has been in a um, incredibly transformative period of her life. I'll let her uh, tell you a little bit more about that momentarily, but she just had an amazing win. Um, We've been working together again now, what, like just, just past two, three weeks or so? Yeah, not, we're not even a full month in yet, right? Nope, not at yeah. all. Um, and we worked together previously for about four months, end of the year, beginning of the year. And so this is our second, second time um, doing the damn thing. And uh, she has started her own business. And what happened? What happened that we are celebrating, Nicole? We are celebrating the fact that I have my first paid client. And what's really exciting to me about this is they approached you. You just showed up fully as yourself and this was not like you were out there pounding the pavement. Um, do you have a website? Nope. Do you sure have don't. an email list? Sure don't. Do you have you know, a social media presence everywhere. I have a social media presence, but not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what about for your business? Uh, for my business, no. It's all been my personal pages. Yeah. So tell me, you know, what has been the most exciting thing in the last like 48 hours for you from this? Because it's clearly been like, from inner work that you've been doing. You haven't been like following all the guru guidance. So, so share with me what the most exciting thing about the last 48 hours has been for you. Well, I would have to say that it's probably the simple fact that I've just been doing the work that uh, needs to be done to get myself out there and show uh, up as a coach. And in doing so, I've you know, put out a little bit of content about what's going on in my life and those little tweaks that I'm making in my life that are making big differences. And then um, I had, you know, I had this, this client approach me and it was, it was really out of the blue because she and I had spoken before and she asked me if I thought she was ready. And she goes, honestly, do you think that I'm ready? And, uh, Right. And in that moment, knowing what she had going on and knowing some of the things, um, yeah. I told her no, but really what I think that was, was I wasn't ready. <laughs> ah, isn't that and, interesting? Yes. And so she um, had, I had given her an exercise and she told me she was ready to send it to me and she sent it to me and she goes, I have a lot of work to do. Um, and she, she said something about, um, whatever I was like, I'll help you work through that. And she goes, well, I want to pay you. And I said, and this is the moment of truth for both of us. And I told her my price and I had a payment within probably 30 minutes of her get receiving the information to pay me. <laughs> Yay. That's to you. I love that, you know, from what you just said, it's very clear to me that, you know, one of the things she likes about you is your authenticness because you didn't try and come across like, look, I have it all together. <laughs> I have to check out my this, check out my that. Like there, there's not that like vibe of um, otherness, like otherworldliness, like, she knew that it was important for her to show up for herself and not just do it in a way where she can, you know, kind of skirt out of it, but like to really put some skin in the game. And the fact that you showed up for yourself and you guys both realized that this is, this is a co-creative relationship mm -hmm. um, for the next, how long are you guys working together? 10 weeks. 10 weeks. And what did you price the container at? 
was that number exciting to you? Like, how did you get to that number? Well, that was a number that had been coming up for some time for me. And uh, there were, was actually a time just early last week that Jen, you and I were speaking and <laughs> we were talking about, um, about that number and mm -hmm. it felt comfortable. But as we spoke about it a little more, we mm -hmm. determined that there was a block around that. And, you know, I did some, some curious looking at that and came up with a lower number that felt better but then also threw out a higher number that felt exciting and couldn't really figure out what was happening there, which gave me an opportunity to really dig deep and go, okay, what's happening? What yeah. is happening? Um, and so when I, when I provided that, that amount for the container to her, I was really actually a little bit nervous. Like I, I was having a difficult time um, expressing it. However, it was the number that I felt I needed to own in that moment. And there yeah. was, um, was no hesitation on her part at all. And it really showed me that um, there is still work to be done there. And also yeah. that there's no harm in owning this figure, but I have to have a strong belief that I deserve and am worthy of that amount. Absolutely. You know, um, I think I told you, I may have actually been talking with somebody else. The first time that I took on a client um, was the same exact day that you closed your first client. That's for me, it was six years ago. And um, one of the things I think that's really beautiful about this relationship in, in, within coaching containers is, you know, I can fast track the fuck out of things for you. And we're going to go as fast as you're meant to go. That being said, um, you know, when I, I took on my first client, I didn't have a coach. I didn't have anybody like guiding me, pushing me, holding me accountable. So I was just like, Oh, what's, what number sounds good. And, um, I'm really happy that you pushed yourself to something that, you know, felt like a stretch goal because I did not do that. And I think that that's one of the benefits of having a supportive container, um, so that you can work on, you know, expansion essentially. Right. When, when you hear the word expansion, what do you think is possible now after having like officially acquired a, a client for yourself? First one, not even a month into this business building journey. Um, what, what becomes possible now for you? A, a whole lot more, a whole lot more. Um, <laughs> just it's well, because it's a foundation, right? The first yeah. step is a scariest step or can be perceived as the scariest step. <laughs> 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 nice reframe. <laughs> it's the it's the story that we tell ourselves about that first step that makes that first step exciting, scary, or 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 just another first step. Mm -hmm. um, but but really, what what I see happening is this gives me an opportunity to actually live out the very things that I've been dreaming about doing, mm -hmm. and you know, visualizing doing, and contemplating perhaps being stuck in my head for a decade over and now this gives me an opportunity to actually do it to stand right in the middle of it and do the darn thing that's so cool 12 years like 10 at least yeah did so let me follow up with that did this happen um on par with like equal to Faster or slower than you thought you would get your first client when we started working in this business capacity together? I'm not entirely certain I ever thought about how long it might take me because one of the things that I try to be mindful of is not attaching myself to an outcome. And there were times that because I'm very much a doer and I've, I've often placed myself in that doer category, I would push push something or pull something along, mm -hmm. perhaps not in its time, but in my own time. And this has shown up in um, other areas of life too, like in playing uh, musical instruments and trying to stay with the beat. I yeah. either push or pull. Um, so in this particular instance, I had chosen that I was just going to allow the process to be what the process was going to be. I was not going to put undo and unnecessary pressure on myself because then the process was no longer fun. It became 
work and hardship. And that's not what I wanted for this because this is something that in an unpaid capacity, I enjoy leading and mentoring, you know, individuals and to be able to monetize it was, um, it, it was one of those really cool things where it's like, well, if you enjoy doing it for free, you should also be able to enjoy doing it as, as a career. Yeah. There's no, I think that that, you know, especially in kind of like the spiritual transformation space, there's this idea that, you know, to be in poverty is to be holy. And that is so, so self-destructive. Um, you can't help people if you can't survive yourself. Um, and you can't help people and make an impact if you're volunteering there, but working somewhere else that you don't enjoy, don't like full time, because then that takes more energy because I love what you said about like keeping this kind of like in a state of flow and fun and not putting any attachment on it, which is absolutely at the foundation of what we've been working on with manifestation, like letting go of the how, being very clear on the desire and taking those inspired efforts to move things forward. Um, the last question I think that I, I can think of right the second that I knew I wanted to ask you is, What's, what's next on the horizon? What do you have in store next? What are you desiring oh. now? Oh, I have to, I have to have that answer right now. Don't you don't have to. Know. I just wanted to make sure that we touched on that. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't really given it a whole lot of thought because right now I'm focused on the right now. And that's mm -hmm. another new thing for me is being present in this moment and knowing that, um, I have a client, I have things, you know, and outcomes that I want to help her to achieve and, and work with her on. Um, but really, I think what it is, is I, I desire the opportunity to help more people mm -hmm. and um, to really solidify what it is that I can do and will be doing so that I have a clear path for how that's going, going to look. I mean, I have some general ideas yeah. um, and I'm, and I'm working through those, but, but really solidifying that so that I can uh, expand my reach and really call in those clients that are, are good soul fits for me. Yeah. Is, is the, for everybody watching, is your goal to, you know, really be able to support uh, one particular audience or like, what does that look like for you? Who, who, who are you really called to serve? Who has your heart? So my, my heart rests with uh, men and women who have gone through divorce, who are in that stage where they are finishing figuring out like what just happened to them and that are really working toward reestablishing their new normal and their, their new life and, and focused on, um, the hope that comes with that newness. So past the grief stage, you know, focused on the rebuilding stage and also focusing on those practices related to health and wellness uh, in that particular area. Um, it's something that I've been through myself. It's a journey that I've, that I've been through. And um, I just have a, a passion for ensuring that individuals have a very solid, uh, you know, yeah. trifecta, if you will, of mind, body, and soul. So for anybody that's watching, you know, if you're a recent divorcee and you want to level up your like health and wellness vibes, this is the lady to talk to. She has walked that road. She keeps it super, super real and doesn't try to be something that she's not, which I think you and I both agree is something that more and more people are craving um, just in any kind of connection. So one, one other question, if I could, if somebody's watching this right now and they are considering like, you know, I kind of think that I should start exploring being a coach and getting support. Like what, what advice would you give them? How has this helped you? Um, what, what would you say to them? Well, my first thing to say to them would be just do it. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> I was going to say to quote Nike. Um, <laughs> but, but really, you can't go wrong. Um, a lot of times, I think, at least from my perspective, what I thought was, oh, I've got this figured out. I can research how to address this. 
I can um, come up with some, there's got to be information out there that'll tell me what I should be doing and whatnot. But what that fails to address is the underlying belief that you have that is keeping you in the place. And Mm -hmm. trust me, I have researched the hell out of things and collected information. Uh uh Uh-huh. Same, same. Hands Uh, up, everybody. (laughs) But what I, what I really found, and I've worked with coaches on and off, uh, again, throughout the 10 years that I've desired to be a coach. And I think a lot of my desire to be a coach came from being coached and just seeing the rich value that comes from it. Mm -hmm. And, um, knowing that when you walk out of, or you step out of the coaching container that you've been in, whether that's for a short time or a little bit longer, you're equipped with tools to operate at a higher level than you had before. And by operate at a higher level, I don't mean to do more, but to be more. And, um, you know, I, I have a greater sense of, of confidence in myself. I have a greater awareness of where those little, little tweaks were that I could make that would make a, a, a very impactful and profound difference um, in many different areas of my life. And what I also have found a benefit with coaching is that while you think you're addressing uh, an underlying belief that may affect, say, relationships, mm-hmm. it actually actually affects everything else. So that's one of my focuses with, you know, while my, while my focus is on that wellness, that mind, body, spirit, um, and, and it ultimately looks like building a firm foundation for yourself, doing so will impact every single relationship within your life. A hundred percent agree. Could not agree with you more. Um, what, what about working through the fears? What has that been like for you? Like to put yourself out there, to invest in yourself? Hmm. It's been a stretch. <laughs> it has been a stretch. I realize in, um, actually in, in this whole process, uh, particularly over the course of the last, we'll say four ish weeks, maybe five weeks since Jen and I reconnected, um, Fear is a monster if you allow it to be. And fear is 100% a liar. It will tell you so many things that are untruths um, that when you just look it in the face and punch it and say, move, move aside and take that step with brave courage, you won't be disappointed. Um, I had some moments where probably the week, it was the three or four days maybe leading up to our first call in this current series of coaching Mm -hmm. where I couldn't sleep. I was having dreams about fear. I was flopping like a fish that then I then picked up a gigantic dead fish and visualized myself slapping fear in the face with it. (laughs) I don't know. No, but when you look up what 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 uh, you know what the meaning of a fish is, it it means rebirth. So you know when when you can find that information and and just really see that what you're what you're going through has a purpose, um, it makes it so much easier. And and you can be paralyzed by fear, but what I've really found is that as you take those steps, even if they're baby steps or even if they're giant leaps any movement getting closer to the other side of what what's on the other side of that fear is, is progress. And it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so good. Hope you guys took notes. Cause that was some fucking gold right there. Like <laughs> seriously, good, good stuff. Um, I think I have one final question. If we still have time, you good? I'm good. Okay, cool. Um, So you are in this new season of life, of creating a business. Um, What, if if you had, um, how could I put this? If you had an ideal way to celebrate this new success, um, what is something that you're going to do or you would love to do to really ground this in, um, through pleasure and play to, um, just reward yourself and, and enjoy what you've manifested. 
Well, that's another great question. See, she always catches you with these ones that you're like, I wish I had a canned response, but I just have to show up in this moment and speak from the heart. Darn. <laughs> she didn't give me the questions in advance. I mean, no, like I totally, I, I, I'm, I'm not even, I don't have any. I make them up as I go, so. Yeah. This is what's great about Jen, and this is what's great about her process. Let me just say, uh, you you really just get to to speak from the heart and just just operate from a place of nowness. Um, so, what would be my ideal way to celebrate this, or you know, to to pleasure up about it and just mm -hmm. just really really own it? Um, honestly, for me, it feels like I need to stand on top of the rooftop of some place and do a dance, right? Right? Like, what is that? That's, hey, be seen. And I was actually talking to my, my, my day job supervisor today about the fact that I don't like to be seen. I like mm -hmm. to be the behind the scenes person mm -hmm. because it is safe. It feels safe. But what I'm learning through all of this is that one, no magic happens. I mean, a lot of magic happens behind the scenes, but the real beautiful stuff happens out there in the world. Um, the more I'm behind the scenes, the less people I can help. So this whole idea of dancing on the rooftops though, kind of, uh, it's a little scary, right? And I may want to shout something and say, Hey, coach uh I don't know but I'm also okay with just being up there dancing and people going what is she doing <laughs> I say yeah. that now but as soon as it lands on YouTube I'd be like pull it down <laughs> <laughs> well we'll work through all those those things too we've got plenty plenty ahead and plenty of time yeah do you have a roof that you can do that on um not easily no I'm in a single family home, I could go downtown and see, uh, you know, about just, just doing it. And I guess it doesn't have to be tonight. I mean, it could be to be tomorrow after work when I'm conveniently located, or it could be in 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Do you think she should celebrate with a dance on a roof? Give us some comments below. Share some of your favorite nuggets that you got from this. Help us celebrate. We are so, so excited and we're thrilled to be able to come and share this with you guys as well. Nicole, thank you so much for spending some time just talking about your situation, how you got here, where you're at right now, and where you're going. I'm so excited for you. Thank you, Jen. Bye, guys.